Okay, it is my pleasure to introduce our guests for today, Gilbert and Angie Rowley and Joe Williams. Uh, Gilbert Rowley is a professional filmmaker that specializes in the outdoor industry and is the owner of Capture Adventure Media. Among his accomplishments in film production include eight official selections in the International Fly Fishing Film Festival, 2016 through 2022, is that right? It keep, the number keeps going up. And the recent critically acclaimed instructional films from the modern nymphing series. In 2018, his conservation-minded adventure film Confluentus won Best Freshwater Fishing Video in the 2018 Drake Magazine Fly Fishing Video Awards. In 2019, his film The Midnight Mission won the International Fly Fishing Film Festival by being voted Film of the Year by audiences worldwide. Are there any fly fishermen or fisher, fishermen or women in the audience? Okay, so if you know anything about this world, that's like the, the peak of fly fishing films that he won, which is pretty cool. Capture Adventure Media has continued to find success in the outdoor industry and has done work for many of the industry's largest companies and personalities. Outside of filmmaking, Gilbert graduated from Utah State University with a bachelor's degree in fisheries and aquatic science and has continued to promote conservation and wise stewardship practices with his various films and fishing adventures. In addition to this adventurous lifestyle, his most cherished time comes while being with his wife, Angie, who's here with us today, and five kids. And Joe Williams, who works with Gilbert now, was two years ago behind the camera where Gary is right now. He was a student of Gary Chittister's and met Gilbert through this class and now works has been working with Gilbert for the last about a year and a half, I think. Uh, so, former Snow College Badger, now living the dream, now in front of the camera, right? <laughs> Where you wanted to be. So, please welcome Joe Williams and Gilbert Rilly. All right. Whoops. All right. Can you guys hear me okay? Wow, oh, we are excited to be here today. It was, it was fun. I've done this one other time. We had a really good time. It was in a bigger room. Uh, everybody's kind of spread out, so it's nice that we're a little bit closer together today. So to start off, whoa. So to start off, let's see if I say it calmer and easier, it won't feed back. No, just kidding. All right, so to start off, I wanted to tell you guys a little bit of our origin story, okay? Every superhero has an origin story. Joe's the superhero in the bunch here, not me, but... We'll tell the story of the business. So Capture Adventure Media has been around. This is year number seven. Before that, um, as stated in my bio, I, I graduated from Utah State University with my degree is in fisheries and aquatic science. So it has nothing to do with filmmaking, business, marketing, or any of the things we do today, except for the fishing side of things. Um, it's been a very, very crazy road to get where we're at. I was working in the electronics industry for Yesco Electronics up in Logan. We were building big digital displays. So like when you go and watch the Utah Jazz play, all the big screens, all the small, everything inside of there that's digital, we built all of that. And other big stadiums and other places all around the world and the big billboards on the side. And it's very different from what I'm doing now. And it was an awesome job. I worked up from a production supervisor to a master scheduler to production manager. So I was overseeing all of the, all of the production shifts and uh, basically I had 120 people underneath me on a $70 million a year company. And we were building circuit boards of all things. So it was very different. But it was a good job, it was a good lifestyle. My wife and I were enjoying life. We had lots of friends up in Logan. And honestly, we had no complaints. It's crazy, but sometimes in life, you get spun in different directions unexpectedly. And that's what this is a story about. Capture Venture Media came out of one of those. Um, while working for Yesco Electronics, um, we, did, we did very well the last couple of years that I was working for them, and we were bought out by Samsung, which is kind of a big deal when a company that big wants to purchase a company in the United States. They bought us out. Life was good. Um, everything was progressing well. And my wife and I just felt inspired that I wasn't supposed to work there any longer. Sounds crazy. Like, looking back, super crazy. Like, we had, we had like, the dream job what lots and lots of people would consider to be a lifestyle worth living. 
But when we feel impressed to do things, we jump. So we jumped. I quit my job. The day after I put in my notice, I got a call from Korea. Hey, you're part of the plan. You can't quit your job. Stick around. I'm like, sorry, guys. And we did. We just left. Um, for no other reason except for we felt like it was the thing to do. I had been making some videos, some absolutely terrible videos of tying flies and posting them on YouTube for four or five years. While I was working these other full-time jobs, I'd stay up all night, make these videos, post them. A couple hundred people would view them, not very many, and that was about it. That's about the only film experience I had. The idea was that I would be able to take my work ethic and turn it into something. We didn't really know exactly what that would be. Anyways, long story short, the other work opportunities that we were going to pursue didn't pan out. So I did tile. I was a construct. I did work in the construction industry for a number of years before while I was going to school. That didn't work out, thank heavens, because my back and knees, they, they didn't like that. Um, fly fishing guide. I was a guide on the Provo River for about 10 years. All of a sudden, I couldn't get any guide trips, which was crazy because years up to then, I could get all the guide trips that I wanted, and all of a sudden, I was struggling to find guide trips. When all of a sudden, a friend said, hey, you know how to run a camera. Do you want to make a video for my company? Sure. So we went and made a... It's an okay video. I wouldn't say it's a good video. We made a video. I got a paycheck, and that was the first time we made money doing anything related to video work. After that, we just kept doing these projects, little projects that were mostly free, just things to learn and to grow, right? And as we went throughout that, I kept having to find other ways to make money provide for the family. So it took a few years. It was a pretty bumpy path. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It was a little bit rough at times. But, but with faith and perseverance and a lot of hard work, uh, we were able to turn it into, into a viable business, which I'll get into a little bit more. But let's see. I do have a clicker here. All right. <clears throat> the reason why I call my presentation Live Life on Purpose is because when you do make a choice to quit a job, and to start a business, that is a choice that has the opportunity to help you live life on purpose. For example, we live in Ephraim, Utah. You might be wondering why. We have no family in Ephraim. Never went to Snow College. We have no connections here. Yeah, we moved to Ephraim. Half the group's like, that was a terrible choice. <laughs> the other half's probably like, yeah, this place is awesome, right? Well, we, we were looking and we wanted a place to, to raise our family. And we ended up here because we wanted to not because a job forced us there, or not because some other opportunity or some other person said, no, you need to move here. We ended up here because we wanted to. And that's what building a business allowed us to do. Now, not every business has that much flexibility and leeway, but ours does. And that's a big part of what we do is, is we're, we're trying to live our life on purpose. Um, so going through this, what we're gonna talk about is we're gonna talk about how to build a business, we're gonna talk about how to make it profitable, we're gonna talk about protecting the asset, which will make more sense in, uh, later on and then how to make that last, okay? So building a business. Captured Venture Media is a business that, that my wife and I have built over the last seven years, but let's take a moment here in this class and let's build a business. You guys ready? You guys okay with that? First of all, who's, who has a business? There's gotta be, I, a couple people have some business ideas or some businesses, right? That's great. Okay, who here likes math? Be honest, raise your hands. We got a few math people. Okay, who, likes, who wants to be our accountant? You gonna be our accountant? Sure. Okay. You might, if it goes well, you might even turn into CFO one day. Right now, we'll just call you an accountant. Okay. Who likes marketing? All right. We've got a marketer over here. You're gonna run the marketing. You're gonna make sure that the products and everything that we we make and create find an audience and get purchased and make us money. Okay. Who likes operations? What that means is the day to day making things happen. All right. Here we go. You in the middle, right there. Okay, so now we've got somebody to cover finances to make sure we don't end up in tax trouble and to pay our payroll and all that kind of stuff. We've got somebody to do marketing. We've got somebody to make sure products are being built, whether they're digital, physical, whatever it might be. All right, what else do we need to build a, product, to build a business? Is there more or is that enough to, to get things off the ground? We need a product. We need a product, okay. Do we need, how about an engineer? How about somebody to create a product? Anybody in here like engineering? The guy in the mask, right there. You can be our engineer, you good with that? Okay, so now we have somebody to create a product, we have somebody to market a product, we have somebody to make sure the product gets built, and we have somebody to make sure we make money and pay our bills and don't get in trouble. That sounds pretty good, right? All right, so if you're part of our team, raise your hand again so everybody can see. All right, this is gonna, I can already tell this is gonna be a successful business. However, there is a caveat. 
I can't pay you anything for your services. Like literally nothing. So I'm going to expect you guys to work, I don't know, not even 40 hours a week, more like 60, 70, 80 hours a week. But you're not going to make any money for a few years. You guys okay with that? It's going to be years. Any problems? Maybe a little bit. <laughs> oh, oh, man, I thought you said you liked the math and accounting. I don't, I don't blame you. How about the rest of you? Anybody else? Are you guys good with that? Okay, that's what it's like to build a business, except... All of the different roles that we just barely divvied out amongst the group here, all of those roles fall on you, on one person. All of a sudden, you're doing your accounting, you're doing marketing, you're creating a product, you're doing all of these things, you're trying to figure out how to make it work, and you're not making any money. On the long, I mean, not, <clears throat> not making any money, but you're also like... I'm going to start telling you no, Russ. I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> but all of a sudden, you've got to provide for a family with five kids and figure out how to make it work. <clears throat> You're probably like, man, why is this weird guy talking about business getting emotional? Well, because it's up and down, up and down, up and down, right? And I'm a crybaby. It goes both ways. <laughs> But <clears throat> with hard work and perseverance, you can make miracles happen in your lives. And all the little kids can stay fed. That's important. All right. <clears throat> but that's what it's like to build a business. Because it takes dedication, it takes a lot of time, and it takes sacrifice. Okay? If you have an idea to build a business at your age right now, give it a shot. You know? I mean, I never did until I, later in life, and it worked out. It's working out, I should say. However... Um, you guys have opportunities right now. Don't overpass them, okay? Don't overlook them, I should say. Do the bootstrap thing Russ was talking about. It's a great opportunity. All right, so when you build a business, it is tough and there are sacrifices. But if you're going to build a business, make sure it's something that you love. Make sure it's something you enjoy. There's a good chance you're not going to love it as much because you're going to ruin it at times. Like all of a sudden, you're going to be on an amazing fishing trip wanting to catch fish and do all these cool things and you're gonna be running a camera the whole time, <laughs> right? But that's part of the sacrifice that you make. So I wanted to give you guys just a quick, this is a quick trailer of a film project that we did two years ago. This was in the film festival last year. Um, this will give you an idea of what we do at Capture Venture Media. How do we turn up the volume? Oh, I get to turn it up. Experts say the sunshine has a way of making us happy. And with that in mind, I must say, this is my happy place. Sunshine for days. I mean, where on this wonderful planet of ours exists more sunshine than in the desert? So relax. Let me take you on a virtual vacation to the place that makes me happy. Because none of those experts ever said virtual sunshine can't do the same for you. That was kind of fun. Who knows? Yeah. <clears throat> Thanks, Russ. All right, anybody here ever been to Lake Powell before? It's a pretty special place, right? So that is one cool thing about, about um, the work that we do. We get to go to amazing places like that. Okay, I've already talked about things on this slide, so let's just skip on. Oh, here is the Capture of Intram Media crew. I need to Photoshop Joe in there because Joe's now there. <laughs> but these are my coworkers. This is what it looks like when you start a business as well. Um, I don't exactly know who the account is, or, <laughs> yeah, but that, that's a good crew. Coworkers, sometimes they come to work looking a little bit crazy with upside down sunglasses, but they sure are fun to spend time with. That's my editing desk a few, a few houses ago, but it's always a mess. Okay, Russ talked a little bit about some of the successes that we've had um, that really opened up the door to help us be able to create this, this business. So here's just a list. I'm not going to spend much time on them. But these are some of the film projects that we've had that have really uh, helped us out and made a difference and opened up a lot of doors. Um, okay, we're going to skip that. 
Never mind, that's a fun one. We're going to watch that. Okay, <laughs> the IF4, the film festival that, that was mentioned, um, the second film project I ever did that actually was, I didn't make money on it, but kind of a big deal is this top one called Wide Open. Went out to San Diego, made a film about catching tuna, yellowfin tuna on a fly rod. And that's opened up more doors than ever imaginable. It opened up these other projects on this list, but also projects that made a lot of money. So don't be afraid if you start a business, sometimes you gotta do things for free or even pay your own way to get San Diego to film other people fish. Which looking back, I'm like, that was crazy. But it worked out good. So the IF4, is a traveling film festival that goes over 100 locations. And a couple of the doors that it's open, for example, it's owned by Fly Fusion Magazine, which is a pretty big fly fishing publication. And um, I'm their director of photography because of this. So that means I do their video work. It's also opened up a lot of sponsorship deals with companies. It's opened up a lot of, a lot of good doors have happened because of it. So just so you have an idea of what the IF4 is, here's a quick little trailer from last year's. <laughs> So it's a collection of films from around the world uh, that get put together into a film festival and travels around. It can be shown anywhere. And we've actually toyed with the idea of, of uh, bringing it to Ephraim. I haven't done that yet, but as I'm watching that, I'm, I'm remembering that Chad Dewey, if you guys know who he is, him and I might bring that, the show to Ephraim. Um, the Midnight Mission, this is one that, this is the film that actually won the film festival in 2020. Um, shot Utah, Idaho, Wyoming. So all kind of Western United States local stuff. We'll just, I'll show you it real quick. This is a trailer, of course. Question for you. Do you have a fishing buddy? That person you can call, tell them about some crazy river that you just have to fish, and you know that they'll be right there with you? We've got a friend like that. His name is Kohler. The only problem? About two years ago, Kohler stopped fishing. So here we are with a fishing buddy that doesn't fish. We're gonna fix that. Okay, as I'm watching this, I'm realizing that the people that don't fish are probably like, this is so weird. What is <laughs> the guys that do are probably like, dang, that was awesome. They were catching giant browns on mouse flies that are this big, right? But I wanted to show you guys that just so you have an idea of what kind of business that we have, we've created. Um, so we can talk about number two, which is how to make a business profitable. So how do you measure wealth? This is one of the biggest questions that I would challenge each of you to ask yourselves as you go throughout life. There's money, which is very important to keep the lights on and to keep people fed, all that kind of stuff, but there's also lifestyle that goes into it. And the choice that my wife and I have made with regards to both my college education and what we're doing now, they fit more in the lifestyle category. And what I mean by that is we're making enough money to provide and to grow a business and things are going well that way. But more importantly, uh, my wife really enjoys that I work from home. If she has to take the kids somewhere, I'm there. That's a pretty good perk, right? Or if we want to go on a family vacation, a lot of times we have more flexibility than if, you know, some, if I was working for somebody else. Um, if I need to do a trip that takes me away for an entire week to an exotic location, we can do that. We have the flexibility to do so. That's what I mean by lifestyle. 
Don't, don't get confused, though, by the fact that there are sacrifices both ways, right? So if you're focusing more on money, a lot of times you sacrifice the lifestyle components. But I'll tell you the truth. If you're focusing on lifestyle, a lot of times money is a little bit hard to come by. So it's a balancing act, and each one of us gets to make the decision as to what to pursue in order to, to accomplish the direction, in order to go the direction that we want to regarding how you measure wealth. Okay, so in our business, our top three revenue streams, we have sponsorships for the videos like the ones I just showed you. A lot of times I'll contact companies and I'll tell them, you know, I'll give them a synopsis of the film idea and they'll pitch some money into it. That's not the, that's a small portion of what we do. Uh, second of all, we have production services, which means people will hire us. Um, we do a lot of tourism videos, so like Bryce Canyon, Canyonlands, San Juan County, uh, Davis County here in Utah, we'll go and do tourism related videos and those ones actually, um, they do pay very well and that's a big part of what we do. Number three, which is probably the way we make most of our money, uh, is, inst is creating instructional content. And the cool thing about that is we'll go and we'll create something that's an hour to two hours long of either an online course or a video format and then we will sell that and it will just continue to sell. I still get a check every single month from products that I've made five years ago that are still selling. That's really nice because that opens up the door for you to be able to continue to grow your business without having to continue to work on that project every single day. So that's a big one and that's actually a big part of the direction that we, we are trying to take our business now. So to give you an idea, so entertainment, sponsors, I've showed you a couple of clips. I wanna make sure we have enough time. Yeah, okay. Uh, two years ago we created something called the Buffet Series where we traveled to Mexico, Belize, Canada, uh, Pacific Northwest, a bunch of different places. And we put together some adventure type films that yeah, are on YouTube. Oh, and I should say, back on this slide, maybe you guys saw on the bottom, there's like a caution YouTube. A lot of times people are thinking, man, I'll start a YouTube channel and I'll get all these views and I'll make all this money. It doesn't really work that way until you start getting in the millions and millions and millions of views. So just keep that in mind. If you're gonna create a YouTube channel, which is awesome, I would recommend that you use that YouTube channel to channel your audience to something else that they can buy and you can make money another way, which I think you'll hear more about next week with the My Nice Tie. But, okay, going back to this. So entertainment sponsors, you guys wanna watch one more one minute little short video of fly fishing goodness? Okay, yeah. I see some thumbs up, so we'll hit. <clears throat> you guys can tell but I actually really enjoy what I do it's fun I like sitting back and watch this for a while and I'm like dang that is fun so for those of you that aren't in the fly fishing I hope that you can still see the value okay production services when somebody hires us these are the type of videos that we create there's a place that has stood for thousands of years an icon of Western history beauty and adventure it has been home to ancient peoples before us and will continue to delight generations well after. Your next epic road trip, vacation, or adventure is waiting in San Juan County, Utah's Canyon Country. Make it monumental. Those are fun projects. We get to go to some fun places. I get to take my family on those a lot of times. And uh, they actually pay quite well. Tourism dollars are, are different than fly fishing dollars. So it's, it's something that we we make sure we include in our business plan for every year. Okay, and then instructional content. Here's a quick trailer about, uh, from one that we launched three years ago. Um, we launched a video called Modern Nymphing, which is a fly fishing specific technique that's it's phenomenal and amazing. And it's really grabbed a lot of traction in the, in the fly fishing industry and it sells really well. 
This is actually the trailer for the second video that we created in that. I'll give you an idea there. In our first video, our focus was to give you a foundation on which you could build your European nymphing experience. We hope with this video to elevate your nymphing. I still think it's crazy that a guy can make a living doing this kind of stuff. All right, so number three on the list. So that's an idea of what we do and how we make money off from the products that we create. Mostly digital products. Okay, number three was protect the asset. Um, who can tell me what an asset is? Ready, go. Raise your hand, somebody. Um, an asset is basically something that you have that's going to generate income. It can be a person, it can be a thing, it can be a situation. Even. That is perfect. In fact, I love that you said, the first thing you said is it can be a person, right? Because what this means when protecting the asset, you, me, we are the assets for what we create in this case, because you're exactly right. If you don't protect the asset, you cannot make money. If you don't protect yourself, if you don't build yourself, if you don't invest in yourself, if you don't grow yourself, your knowledge, your business is never gonna succeed. This comes from the concept taught in a book called Essentialism, which is, Hands down, one of my all-time favorite books. Okay, the, yeah, um, what he mentions in there, ways to protect the asset, you college kids are gonna laugh at and be like, oh, yeah, right. <laughs> Number one, sleep. You guys are like, we do homework all night. How are we supposed to sleep? Okay, get sleep. Make sure you get sleep. This is one that I still struggle with, but if you wanna be fresh, if you wanna have your mind where it needs to be, sleep is very important. Number two is have a healthy lifestyle. I remember when I got out of college, or when I got, when I started going to college out of high school, um, holy cow, hot dogs, nachos, whatever was the cheapest way to put calories into my body so I could continue to live was what I did for years. I'm like, oh yeah, we'll just eat ramen and hot, whatever, you know? Now I look back and I'm like, man, I wish, I wish that I would have invested in myself a little bit better um, and been a little bit healthier, take care of myself. Um, working out, that, this doesn't mean that you have to live in the gym and punch, you know, go pump an iron all the time and all that kind of stuff. If you do, that's great. But what it means is, you know, uh, walk as much as you can. Uh, just be active. Take care of yourself, okay? If you do that, there will be benefits that come for years to come. I honestly wake up many, many days and my knees hurt. And it's because of the lifestyle that I chose to, do, chose to live in my 20s, which a lot of you guys are in that stage of life or you will be soon, right? Um, so don't wait. Don't think, ah, I'm, I'm, I feel great, right? Take care of yourselves right now. Then number four right here is to read. And read, I'm gonna throw in that same category. I'm gonna say also listening to books, that counts. I don't really read that much, but I do listen to books on a nonstop basis. I love it. And that is how I invest in myself. That's how I learn and how I grow. So if you, does anybody in here have an Audible account? Does anybody have Overdrive? Anybody have Li Libby? Okay. Everybody who put your hands up, in my mind, you get extra credit. <laughs> That's so important. It's so huge. Audible costs money. I get it. You know, it's not, it's not free. It's, it, it adds up over time. But it's so important um, that when I hired Joe, and we'll talk about that in a second, I actually told him, I said, if you, if you come to work for me, I will pay for your Audible every single month if you promise to listen to the books that I, have, I think that you will you know, need to listen to invest in yourself. And he can pick his own books too, but for the most part, it was a way that I, I just believe in it so much, investing in ourselves that it's, it's that important, okay? So do that. Uh, Overdrive and Libby, those are free. You just have to sign up and uh, there's like a wait list sometimes and books are available often, oftentimes, sometimes you have to wait. So make sure you check that out, okay? Do that. I'm like begging you <laughs> for your own good, please do that. 
Okay, these are the keys. These are some of the keys that I have found that I'm still working on and that I would definitely recommend to college students. These are things that I wish that I would have known and applied when I was your age. I didn't start applying most of these until I was in like, I don't know, 33, 34 years of age, right? So I would, I would, if I could go back, I would change that. I would do that. So, all right, let's move on to number four, how to make a business last. It's not your business, it's your purpose, okay? Thank you. So to make, your, to make your business last, you have to have a purpose that you believe in. You have to have ideals and things that you're truly uh, comfortable pursuing the rest of your life, right? And if you do that, you will find a way. You guys are hard workers. You're enrolled in college. You're, maybe you're athletes. Maybe you're like everybody in this room is special and hardworking in their own unique way. Okay, so if you truly believe in something, then I believe that anybody in this room can make a business out of anything. I mean, I'm doing it making fly fishing videos. So there's the outdoor industry, which is big. There's the fishing industry, which is smaller, but still big. And then there's a little tiny thing called fly fishing. And if we're making a, bit, a business making videos, which is an even smaller component within the fly fishing industry, then I believe that you guys can make a go at just about anything you put your mind to, okay? I truly believe that, and you need to believe that as well. Um, one thing that's not on here, that I just wanted to mention, oops, let's just push that little button again, um, is that the biggest struggle that I've had with my business is, is learning that, first of all, there's the sacrifices we talked about in the beginning. Second of all, knowing that when you create a business, it's very, very hard to separate your personal life from your business. And what I mean by that is when you have a job, when you leave that job at five o'clock and you go home, you're no longer at that business. You're no longer, you can leave it behind. You can live your life and you can do whatever you want, right? When you're trying to grow a business, there's no separation. It's so hard, it's incredibly difficult because every waking hour, you're trying to figure out how to make the next product, how to market the existing products, how to get your taxes done, which reminds me, I still need to do that. Anyway, there's all these things. You can't separate, it's like, I swear, it's so hard, to, it's almost impossible to separate. So you have to realize that there are limitations, there are difficulties that exist. And that is one thing that no, I don't remember anybody ever telling me when they're like, yeah, start a business, do your thing, be an entrepreneur. Well, especially with other interests, wives, kid, wife, singular, <laughs> there's only one of those. <laughs> wife, kids, there's five of those, right? Um, and other interests, sports and outdoors and all that kind of stuff, like it is very hard. So just keep that in mind, right? That that is a sacrifice that you'll need to be willing to make until you grow the business to astronomical proportions, which we have not done yet, but eventually. So that would be one of the biggest challenges that I face that I wanted to bring up just so you guys aren't caught off guard. So you can't say like 10 years from now, nobody ever told me that. Okay, one of the cool things that, one of the greatest opportunities that I've had with this business is to hire my first employee, which we talked a little bit about in the beginning. This, so Joe Williams, um, Snow College guy, uh, we set up some interviews with multiple students here at Snow College. We ran them through the process, and he was the, the candidate that we went with. And it's been amazing to finally hire somebody that can take some of the workload off from my plate and do a, an exceptional job at it. And it's cool to think that he was in your shoes not that long ago. So I wanted to give Joe just a minute, maybe three at most, because we're almost out of time. And then, then there's one more thing we need to do. So do I turn my mic off? Make sure mine's on. Okay, um, yeah, so like we said, I was at Snow College. I just graduated last spring, um, so really not that long ago. Uh, I'm still working for Gilbert full-time and still going to school online, so that's kind of the place that I'm at in life right now. But the biggest advice I could give to you, especially as you're looking to start your own business, kind of like I am in the next few years, uh, is make sure that you build a network while you are in school. And through that network, be sure that you um, make sure everybody in there knows your work ethic, knows your interests, and knows what your goals are. Um, the biggest assets to you right now as students and to me are your professors, especially business professors. Two of the greatest assets I have found in my life at Snow was Russ and Gary. Gary trained me how to, um, how to make videos. 
Russ set me up in the, it, with the right people, with Gilbert, to be able to do what I love to do full time. Network, 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 that is the biggest thing. And the next thing I would recommend is make sure you know where your interests are and exceed at those interests. Work hard and grow your skills. Um, if you like business, grow your business skills. If you like math, grow your math skills. Really, really make yourself invaluable. So when that network comes and when you've built that network, you are worth it to those people to recommend to each other. Um, yeah, and that, that's really all I can tell you. Uh, just make sure you network, make sure you know people in the industry you want to go into. If you don't know who those people are, I guarantee you Russ knows those people or Russ knows people who know those people and he can get you connected. Make sure that you're talking to your professors, they know your name, you know their name, and yeah, it's just a great cycle that will always, always pay off for you in the end. That's about all I have time to say, I think. Yep, just kidding. Good job, Joe. That was great. Yeah, because we actually, we only have a few minutes and I need to ask some help. I need you guys to help me, if you're willing to do so. So you remember how I said that when you're running your own business, there's no separation? Like, when I come on a campus to present, I'm still looking for opportunities to promote what I do. So, as I was walking in, I did a little video. Russ, if this is in a, like, this, if I can't do this, you tell me. But I was like, hey, I was still called, I'm gonna present some other, right? Or whatever. And then my wife and Joe, they've been like getting a couple little shots of me up here, hopefully not when I was crying. <laughs> All right. And now, I wanted to ask you guys for your help. And after we do this, then I might have a couple minutes for questions. But would you guys be up for just kind of giving a big cheer and a big roar like crazy? Everybody, raise your hand if you're okay with that. Let's go, come on. All right, you guys cool with that? And do we have to social distance? Can you guys squeeze together? It'll be quick, it'll be quick, it'll be quick. Yeah, everybody's got to stand up. Where you're at is fine. And then I'll tell you what we're going to do. Borrow this phone. Okay, we might have to practice once to make sure that we're all like into it. Oh, that's a good looking bunch. All right, this is awesome. Okay, here's what, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have the camera pointed towards me. I'm gonna say, all right, I'm here at Snow College, how'd it go? And as I turn and put the camera on you guys, you guys all just go like that. And just pretend like it was amazing, okay? <laughs> Everybody cool with that? Yeah. All right. Yes. Thanks, Russ. All right. Do we need to practice once? Here, we'll practice without the phone. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm here at Snow College presenting. How'd it go, guys? Yeah, that was pretty good. That was pretty I think we can do better, though. You ready? All right, I'm going to record this one. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> All right, I'm here at Snow College. How'd it go, guys? Yeah! Woo! All right! Yeah! <laughs> Nicely done, man. A+. Plus. Well, sorry, I shouldn't say that. I don't actually know if we get A pluses. I'm just kidding. I keep giving extra credit and A pluses and all this stuff. <laughs> I'm just helping you out, Russ. Sorry, I'm helping them out. Okay, so thank you guys. First of all, thank you. I'll give you a round of hand. You guys did a great job. Appreciate it. And then second of all, we have a couple minutes if there are any questions. If you have a question, raise your hand. Have you taken the Clifton Strengths test? Did you know your top five strengths? I do know my top five strengths. Does everybody know what the Clifton Strength test is? It costs 50 bucks. We just did it in our class. They, have, they can get a quote from the Career Center. For a, what? Yeah. Everybody needs to do that. I'm not even kidding. It's, a, it's like one of my, my wife's like favorite things like my is to talk about. We have a binder <laughs> printed off with all of our strengths. And mine are mostly in the relationship. I don't forget what it's called. The... I won't tell you what my first one is. <laughs> There's like all these macho ones, like, like uh, what's the macho ones? I can't remember. <laughs> nice, all right, harmony. It's like a woman's name, you know? Yeah, I'm here for you guys, right? No, I'm just kidding. But the Clifton Strength Test, if you have an opportunity, it's, it's very valuable. And it's helped with the business, it really has. 
it's helped, like, to, especially with employees and things like that, to be able to know how to do that for me with my strengths. So I highly recommend it. Okay, there's another question, I believe. Here we go. What that would have done, what at least looking back, what I think that would have done, what the benefits there, I think that I would have been terrible for probably just as long. <laughs> right? Because it took a long time to get good at things, right? But I think that the networking would have been there. And how is networking in this? You gotta think about it. In the construction industry, is your microphone? No. Oh, it's dead. Dead? Oh, I think you turned it off. I think you turned it off. Turn it back on. Oh, okay. Sorry, I'll talk about it. Um, so I was networking in the electronics industry and all of these other worlds that existed and I missed opportunities because of that. There's trade shows, there's, there's lots of different things that exist in the fly fishing world that had I started earlier, it would have opened up doors maybe upwards to a decade sooner than, than it actually did. So networking is a big one. Uh, developing a skill set is a big one. Also, when you're in college and you have less uh, people to be responsible for, it's easier to be broke. Right. That's, that's what he's telling you guys. It's really hard to grow once you have a wife and kids. It's good to mess up. Like that's a good thing. Fail. Mess up a lot, a lot, a fail, lot, a yeah. lot, and then you'll know what not to do. Fail early, fail, fail fast. He right? did that with me a lot, and I kept telling him, "Keep going, keep going, keep going." I've I've, been I have failed a lot. That is true. <laughs> and you learn from every project that you do. Still to this day, every single project we go on, we learn something new, and every single failure. Or success. I mean, you're just learning. You're constantly evolving, constantly learning. That's a great question. Thanks. We have time for one more. Okay, one more question. Oh, man. Crowd is silent. Okay. Anybody want to know anything about Joe? Like, for real, do so you want to take the last question? I want to know something about Andy. Andy used to. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Joe. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. Just shared some, some tips. Okay, thank you guys. Thank you so